Greetings everyone, so today I want to talk about, I guess, Apple's new M1 chip. I know they're probably working on a professional version for their MacBook Pro, probably an iMac Pro, and I definitely know that they're probably going to make one for the Mac Pro when that time comes. But I've been thinking about getting an Apple MacBook, and I'm thinking, should I wait for that new version of the M1 chip? what is called M1X or M12, or just go ahead and get what's available on the market now. Cause I want a 15 inch. I don't want that 13 inch MacBook Pro. So I want the bigger screen. Now I'm gonna break it down of what I plan on getting right after this. Okay, after weighing all the options and looking at all the specs and stuff like that, I think I'm gonna go with the MacBook Pro with the Intel processor that's available now on the Mac store because that one is a little bit settled down for now. From what I'm understanding that the M1 chip is a new architecture, so therefore the software developers have to get to that point where they can port over their apps to let them run smoothly and at a professional level on the M1 chip. And that's going to take a lot of time because a lot of software developers are still in the process of doing that conversion. Apple has a software that can actually take the current version of the software that runs on the Intel chip and make them run smoothly on the M1 chip. But I'm waiting for that second grade M1 chip. Like I said, I'm not sure it's going to call X or two. You know, I've seen a lot of things on the internet where they have different naming conventions for it, but there's not official name yet from Apple. So those are just speculation in my eyes. So in the meantime, I'm going to go for the current Intel version iMac Pro 15 inch. That's already on the market. And in a year or so, when the new M1 chip comes out, that newer version, and the software developers are able to port their apps over to run smoothly on it, then I will consider probably upgrading. Now I do the same thing when it comes to the Windows world. When Microsoft change different version of Windows, like they went from Windows 7 to Windows 10. I kind of waited till, you know, they smoothed things out before I went over. Because if you automatically switch over to the new operating system as soon as it comes out, there's a possibility, a strong possibility that software that you're currently using will not run on that new operating system because it's not ready yet by the software developer. So I always make sure that all my software that I'm using now can run on that new architecture or that new operating system before I make a major switch. So I know a lot of people out there probably looking at that new M1 processor that's running on the iMac and the MacBook and even the Mac Mini. But before you make that switch, make sure that all the software that currently runs on your system can run on the new operating system and architecture. Because a lot of people jump ship and then realize that they can't run the current software on their new operating system or the new system that has a new processor. Because I've run into situations like that where people asking me questions about how come they can't run this software on this new system, but they didn't realize that the software it wasn't ready to run on that system in the first place. Now, some software developer, if you're signed up for the newsletter, will send out that newsletter in your email to let you know when it's time to go ahead and do that upgrade. They will send out a newsletter to let you know that their software is not ready for that new operating system or even that new architecture. So it's a good thing to sign up for the newsletter from the software developer of a software that you use on a regular basis that you really need to continue using when you make that switch. So that's what I personally do before I make a switch. I don't just jump to the new software or the new processor that hits the street because I'm not sure if that new system or new software can actually run the current software that I'm using right now. And the easy way to find out is to actually go to the software developer website and look to see if they say that the software can run on the current system. Or you can even send them an email through their support system to find out if you can go ahead and make that switch. Because you don't want to be dead in the water. Now, if you keep your current system instead of selling it, then you can always go back. But then now you're dealing with two different systems. So if you just wait till that software is fully compatible on the new system, then that's the best time to make that switch. 
Now, nine times out of 10, the hardware, the external hardwares that you're using, like a printer and stuff like that, will work on the new system. And I say nine times out of 10, there's probably a one piece of hardware that's not fully ready to work on that new operating system or a system with a new processor. And in most cases, there's probably a driver from the manufacturer that can make it work on that new system. But you'd have to go to the hardware manufacturer website to find that out. And the case is the same as the software. You can contact the manufacturer of that hardware to their support system and find out if that hardware is going to work on that new system. So basically what I'm trying to tell you in this video is to make sure that your software and hardware can work on that new operating system or the new processor that's coming out by that particular manufacturer like Microsoft and Apple. And if everything is okay, then go ahead and do that upgrade if you would like to. But that's the first thing you want to check before you make that change over to a new system. All right, so I hope this video was helpful. Thanks for taking the time for watching. If you have any questions, leave it down below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. If you haven't, hit that like button if you like this video. Thanks for watching. Have a good one and I'll see you next time.